here, members of the cabinet, all of you ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure to have you all join us here in the Rose Garden as we efforts of Americans across this land a growing commitment to solving the problem of drug abuse in our society. It's a little bit like a story I like. He lined one out there and went down and found his ball was sitting right in front of an ant's nest. Got out an iron, he took a cut at it didn't hit the ant nest. When he lined up for the third shot, there were two ants down there, and one of them said to the other, if we want to survive, we better get on the ball. <laughs> it comes in handy, decriminalized, or simply regulated. We now know what drugs are, and we're not shy about saying it. Drugs are an evil, pure and simple, an evil that destroys lives, steals our children's future, and undermines the foundations of our free society. 12,000 Just Say No clubs in schools across the United States. But most troubling of all is the testimony of our children themselves. Not just our college students, or our high school students, or even our junior high students. As early as the fourth, fifth, and sixth grades, students are already identifying drugs as a major problem among their schoolmates. No one I say as a nation, I mean just that. Combating this drug epidemic is the responsibility of every American. Parents, teachers, school administrators, employers, workers, and union officials, public office holders, and private organizations. Two that we're looking to our college administrators to become serious about fighting drug use on our nation's campuses. The time for excuses is over. Our colleges can no longer be neutral on the subject of drugs. Nobody has a right to say we must no longer be shy in demanding the right of our children, the right of all Americans, to live in a drug-free society. And the work of this conference will be a major step forward in initiating an Ike Harrington as chairman of the conference. has had a distinguished career and an assigned that statement there. said to me, I'll go back and go to work.
I'm waiting to hear as much as anyone else. I've Any told you over and over again everything that I know about all that took place, and I'm waiting to find out. Senator Noway says you ought to check your memory about your statement that you knew nothing about illegal fundraising within your administration, sir. No illegal fundraising, as far as I know, at this point. I knew, as everyone else I think knew, that out there in the country there were people that were contributing and privately and in groups giving money to aid the conference. Military with, aid, with, sir. With, with, with weapons, sir? Ah, I don't know how that money was to be used, and I have no knowledge that there was ever any solicitation by our people. Did you know what Colonel North was doing? Did you know he was coordinating this? No. What about the third country, sir? Why were they contributing money? Why would uh, you another find, country? You will America? find that within the law, the law specified that the Secretary of State was to encourage our fellow democracies what, to give aid what, to the freedom fight. Including for military aid, sir? It's up to whatever, however they wanted to do it. Are you willing to testify if asked? Are you willing to testify before the Select Committee if asked? I have to wait and find out. How do you what? feel as the hearings are beginning, sir? What is your expectation? Well, I'm hopeful that I'm finally going to hear some of the things that I'm still waiting to learn. But about. don't you know what you did? I mean, do you have to have someone else tell you what you did? Don't you know what you did? I know what I did, and I have told all of you repeatedly what I did, and now I'm going to quit talking to you in the office. Should Senator Hart drop his bid for the presidency? Ah. What should Senator Hart do? What should he not have done before he did it? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning.
there's some news I thought you'd like to hear about this Friday morning. Figures are in for April. Total employment rose by 466,000 in April. Unemployment decreased by 354,000. And that means the unemployment rates for all workers uh, and for all civilian workers fell to 6.2 and 6.3, respectively. I wish they'd get used to talking about the first figure, the 6.2, because that includes the military, and I'm convinced they're working. They've got jobs. That's a drop of a full three-tenths of a percentage point in a single month, and it marks the lowest unemployment rate in more than seven years. And it's worth pointing out that these numbers exceed the expectations of most private forecasters, and taken together with the healthy gains in employment during the first quarter of this year, these April statistics indicate that economic expansion and creation of jobs continues at a strong pace. End of statement. What happened to the unemployment rate for minorities, Mr. President? Unemployment rate for minorities. Well, I'll, I'm not going to take any questions except because you asked that one on this point. It is my understanding that for some period now, the unemployment rate, employment rate uh, for minorities is dropping faster than the general unemployment rate. Right, please. Mm -hmm. Mr. President, do you think that private persons carrying out your foreign policy should private profiteer from it? Helen, I can't take any. Have you been any, watching Seacord? A little, but I can't take any questions here now. We've got to get down to some very urgent business. Is Colonel Ross still a national hero, Mr. President? No question. Unless you want to ask about any point. <laughs> <laughs> strategy. As you know, the House has passed an unacceptable trade bill. And I understand the Finance Committee has marked up its trade reform proposal, and we're anxious to have a detailed look at that one. I know that representatives of our administration were consulted throughout the finance process, and a number of improvements were made in the bill, but we still have some very serious problems here, and I hope we can work them out. I'd like to get a trade bill I can sign, and I hope I can count on you and your colleagues to work with us to reach that goal. But Bob, I'd like to hear your assessment of the Finance Committee's action, and then I'll ask Jim Baker and Alan Woods for any comment they might have. Let me compliment first, Mr. President, Alan Woods.
that right? No, New Hampshire is rather big. Yes. Well, thank you all for coming down here this morning to discuss the debt ceiling. I know that the Republicans, that's just wonderful. We love that. <laughs> no, it's always a difficult time. And it's something that both Republicans and Democrats have to face up to. We've been through this many times in the last few years, but this is a little different year. At midnight, May 15th, the temporary debt limit will expire. And unlike previous years, there are no administrative actions available to prolong the availability of cash. Without congressional action, therefore, as Jim has told us already, the, the, uh, the United States government will run out of cash by May 28th and default on its debt. Now, we've never defaulted in 200 years, and to do so now would result in unthinkable consequences, severe disruption of domestic and international financial markets, as well as increasing interest rates. So let me stress that I understand the political dilemma faced by Republicans on this issue. However, I believe the economic consequences of default present a far graver risk than voting for debt limit legislation. We really need your help on this one. I urge you to work with us for the prompt enactment of a clean, long-term debt ceiling increase. Now I'm going to ask Jim Baker to elaborate on the situation and we'll open it up for, for a general discussion. Thank you, Mr. President. I uh, elaborated, as uh, most everybody here knows, at some length the other morning before the uh, conference, and uh, I suppose most everybody heard what I had to say and the questions that were directed my way. Let me just make one point, if I, if I might, or maybe.